Hello and welcome to Kinesiology Chris. Today we'll be going over the origins and insertions of the radius and ulna bone. I know it's exciting, but try to relax and focus. I'll try to make this as painless as possible, I promise. So we will go over the origins first and then move on to the insertions. As always, let's figure out what the heck we're looking at. Surprise! It's the radius and ulna bone. The view is from the right forearm. The picture on the left is an anterior view and the one on the right is a posterior view. It's easy to identify which bone is the radius bone with that round radio dial shaped head. I go over the anatomy of the radius and ulna bone in another video. If you're not too busy, the link is in the description box below. Okay, so let's begin. First, we will review the policy muscle. The policy? Susie, this is supposed to say the policies. Please fix it. But you know what? Actually, that works, because before you do something, you should read the policy first. And the policis is Latin for pollux, which means the thumb, your first digit. So just remember, you read the policis first, you remember it's the first digit, the thumb. Okay, let's focus on the posterior view. The abductor pollicis longus originates on the interosseous membrane, the posterior side of the radius and ulna bone. Longus means it's a long muscle, so it inserts in a place far, far away on the pollicis. And we know what pollicis means, the thumb. So it inserts on the first metacarpal bone. Next muscle, the extensor pollicis longus. It originates on the middle one third of the posterior ulna and the interosseous membrane. Now it's a longus muscle, which means it's, um, long. And it's a pollicis muscle. So we know it inserts on the first digit. Good job. The distal phalange of the first digit to be exact. Up next is the extensor pollicis brevis muscle. It originates on the distal posterior radius and the interosseous membrane. The word brevis is Latin for short. Like that cartoon, uh, brevis in the longest butthead. Pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you can never unsee this. I'm sorry. Anyways, brevis means short and longest means long. This is a brevis muscle. Therefore, it's a short muscle and it's a pollicis muscle. So we know it inserts on the first digit, the thumb. It inserts on the proximal phalange to be exact. Okay, now let's go over to the anterior view of the radius and ulna bone. The flexor pollicis longus muscle originates on the middle anterior shaft of the radius and the interosseous membrane. It's a longus muscle and it's a pollicis muscle. So we know it inserts on the first digit and it inserts on the distal phalange. One thing I noticed with all these pollicis muscles, they all seem to originate on and around the interosseous membrane. Okay, back to the poster review. Next up on the hit list is the extensor indices muscle. It originates on the distal posterior ulna bone and the interosseous membrane. Now, the word indices is Greek for index, so this muscle inserts on your index finger. You know, your pointer finger, which is your second digit, so when you see indices, think index and program your big brain to remember that. Maybe it's indecent to point, indices, index, indecent, I don't know. Some might even say it was indecent of me to brainwash you. I just noticed something funny. The three extensor muscles that we reviewed on the posterior review look like a bunch of states on a map. Like the United States of extensor muscles. And above that must be the uh, Canadian abductors. Now calm down, Canada. I'm not accusing you of anything, it's just a play on words. Up next is the extensor carpi ulnaris muscle. It originates on the posterior proximal shaft of the ulna and the lecranon. It's a long, slim line. It looks like a uh, giant carpool lane trying to get in the United States of extensor muscles. Good luck getting in there. Ha! Carpool, carpi. I love it. More wordplay. Now, the extensor carpi ulnaris muscle has two heads which means it has two origins. A humeral head, which inserts on the lateral epicondyle of the humerus bone, and the ulna head, which originates on the lecranon and the pro posterior proximal shaft of the ulna. Now the word carpi is plural for the word carpus, and ulna means ulna. So the muscle originates on the ulna side of the forearm and inserts on the fifth metacarpal bone, your pinky finger. They say opposites attract, and that saying holds true for the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle which is up next. The flexor muscle is hanging out right next to the extensor muscle of the same name on the posterior side of the bones. Now this flexor carpi ulnaris muscle also has two heads, so it has two origins. The humeral head is on the medial epicondyle of the humerus bone, 
and the ulna head is on the proximal posterior aspect of the ulna bone and the lecranon. Like a uh, second row of cars formed a carpy lane. I mean a uh, carpool lane. Traffic's kind of getting backed up there at the border of the good old uh, USE. I guess the Canadian abductors went Trump on them and built a wall. See what happens when you build a wall? They just go round or under. So let's look back to the interior view. Because sticking to one view is boring. Onto a new muscle. The flexor digitorum profundus originates on the medial middle anterior shaft of the ulna and the interosseous membrane and it inserts onto the distal base of the four phalanges. Now wrapped on and over top of that muscle like it's trying to give it a big hug or uh, superficial to that muscle is the flexor digitorum superficialis or FDS for short because it's a long name. <laughs> the FDS muscle also has two heads. The first head originates on the anterior shaft of the radius on the oblique line and then it hugs over top of the FDP where the second head of the flexor digitorum superficialis originates on the coronoid process of the ulna and the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Next up is the supinator muscle, which is probably one of the coolest muscle names in existence of mankind. I am the supinator. Oh boy. Okay. That muscle originates on the supinator crest of the ulna. See? What did I say? This muscle is so cool there is a part of the ulna bone named after it. At least that makes one of the origins easy to remember. It also originates on the radiocollateral ligament and the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. Now, the supinator muscle performs supination. The opposite motion would be pronation. And that requires two muscles to perform that action. The first muscle is the pronator quadratus muscle. It originates on the distal medial anterior shaft of the ulna bone. And it inserts on the distal lateral anterior shaft of the radius bone. That was easy. Now the second muscle of this dynamic pronation duo is the pronator teres muscle. This bad boy has two heads, a humeral head which originates on the medial epicondyle and the medial supracondylar ridge. Then we have the ulna head which originates on the coronate process of the ulna. The pronator teres muscle then inserts on the medial lateral surface of the body of the radius bone. By the way, how many muscles can attach to one bony landmark? Because that medial epicondyle is getting a bit crowded. It's an epic. In fact, I just renamed that bony landmark to the epic condyle. Okay, now take a deep breath. <sighs> the origin portion of this video is done and you can relax. Now we move on to the radius and ulna insertions. While you're relaxing, I need you to focus and pay attention. Here we go. Okay, time for some new muscles. Yay! That guy's happy. I think I've heard him before. The muscles and insertions we are about to go review all originate off other bones and insert onto the radius and ulna bone. I'm not going to go over the origins of these muscles, just the insertions that are on the radius and ulna bone. I'm starting with the strongest elbow flexor in the human body, the brachialis muscle. It inserts right here on the coronoid process of the ulna and the ulna tuberosity. If you happen to watch my video on the brachialis muscle, you know about the coronoid falls, but not everyone's seen that video, so they'd be confused. But that's the insertion. For that muscle, the coronoid process of the ulna and the tuberosity. Moving on. Next up is the brachioradialis muscle. It has one of those uh, fancy names that has two names in one, you know, brachio and radialis. Like that kid from uh, Winnie the Pooh. Good morning, What's his name? Christopher Robin. Uh, Christopher Robin. I guess it thinks it's stylish or something, which is why it inserts onto the styloid process of the radius. And good news, that's the only insertion of the brachioradialis muscle. You gotta love the easy ones. Next up, the biceps. The bicep brachii to be exact. It's that muscle all the guys and girls work out to inflate in shape like a round inner tube. And it just so happens that it inserts on the radial tuberosity located here. And it's easy to remember that it inserts on the radius bone and not the ulna because anytime you flex your biceps, the thumb, which is on the radius side, touches your shoulder, not the pinky finger. And if you're trying this right now, don't get all fancy and go flexing and pronating your wrists trying to touch your shoulder with your pinky finger. Not cool. As I said, the bicep brachii inserts on the radial tuberosity. For the next muscle, we're going to stick with the name brachii. Any guesses? You have a 50-50 chance and we just reviewed the other brachii muscle. You better have been right. It's the triceps brachii and it inserts onto the lecranon process of the ulna right here. Now, we are on the last muscle for this video, and it's the aconius muscle. 
It inserts onto the posterior surface of the ulna and the lateral surface of the lecranon. That's it. Short and sweet. Thanks for watching. Please share and like the video. Also, subscribe to see future videos. You can also donate through YouTube, PayPal, or even become a Patreon if you have change to spare or need to change a spare. Nope, that's not right. But, uh, thank you so much for watching. Links for the videos mentioned in the video are in the description box below this video. And as always, happy studying, my friends.